Good morning, everyone, or good whatever time of day it is. Um, today, we're going to be doing a little tutorial on Adobe After Effects. Um, so let's get started. Um, so this is my After Effects window. I just opened it, and so I'm going to show you how to start a new project and how to keep your workspace clean. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit New Project, then I'm going to go to New Composition. Okay, so these are the settings I like to use. Um, I personally like to use um, Ultra HD 4K, 29.97. Um, but um, I know a lot of people just go to HDTV 180 here. Um, there's a bunch of different settings, so you can play with that and see what you like. This will be what your project exports out as. Um, here is how big your workspace is, so your actual project how big it's going to be like not like data wise but like physically like how big it's going to be um and everything else um if you're doing like a project or something for some like a professor or something they'll usually tell you what kind of settings they want um these are just the ones that i personally work with um here is the how long your project's going to be i think the default is 15 i have it set to 10 right now because that was my last project that i did so I'm going to keep it at 10, but you can change it to 15. You can change it to a minute and 10, an hour and 10 minutes and 10 seconds. It's all up to you, but I'm just going to do a small 10 second one. And this background color here, I think um, can help a lot of people. So I like to work with like really bright backgrounds so I can really tell what's coming on screen and what's not, what's supposed to be there and what's not. So I, I typically do like a neon green, but if you're using neon colors and it's you know kind of hard to see what's going on, I maybe would do black or maybe even white. And when you actually go to export the project, this background color doesn't show up. It's gonna be either black or transparent depending on how you export it out. Um, so I like to do green because you're not gonna see it anyway. And yeah, those are my settings. So let's get started. Um, I personally like to go into my finder window. If you are working on a PC, it's going to be what your downloads or your files. Um, but I'm in my finders window and I'm doing a little, a little typography project for type two at UNL. So that's kind of cool. Um, so let's, let's do ABC. Let's export those in. So as you can see, I just, I brought it into this little window here. This is like your mega workspace. Like this is everything you're gonna be using for your project. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't show up on the actual like workspace. Um, so this is like, consider this like your base. Like this is everything you're gonna be pulling everything from. So let's get it started. Um, I'm going to pull all three of them into the actual workspace. So it's going to be down here. So I highlighted and selected all of them. And so now I'm going to drag and drop down here. Here's this. Um, um, a real big learning curve that I had when first using After Effects is if you're using a laptop and a trackpad, the way to move around your workspace is way different than Illustrator or InDesign or even Photoshop because you can usually like, you know, zoom in and move around using your trackpad, but that doesn't really work on this um, program. So a big help is using um, V and H key, hotkeys V and H here to toggle between hand and selection tool. And V is pretty much universal throughout Adobe. I can't think of a program that doesn't automatically go to selection tool for V. Um, but H is different. So H is going to let you drag and like move what you're seeing on the screen. Um, and so this is, this is my video window. Like this is what's going to be showing up when I export it, like anything that's in here. And so, um, but as you can see, you can move things in and out of frame. And let's say like, I'm zooming, I'm zoomed in here. And let's say I want to move around and I'm trying, you can't see it, but I'm trying to move my trackpad the way I would on InDesign or Illustrator and it's just not working. So I'm going to take my little hand here and move it around this way. 
And so there you go. I personally like to keep my workspace at 33.3. I find that um, a pretty, pretty good size to work with. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's do a small little animation here. So I personally, what I like to do first is I'm gonna size them to what I want. So I just selected them all, shift, and then oop, drag the proportions down. I hit shift to make sure they maintain the same proportions. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, so as you can see, if I let go shift, I can like warp them and do all this stuff. But if I keep holding shift, it constrains the proportions. So they will stay the same size or not the same size, but the same proportions. You got me. Okay, so let's just have them like slide onto, onto frame. So I'm gonna select them. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna align them. Let's align them on the bottoms. Okay, and then distribute so they're even. Okay, so I just played with the spacing. This is pretty much what I want it to look like. Um, so actually what I like to do is set them where I want them to finish and kind of work backwards. And so first thing I want to happen, we're going to go to B, this B, um, and we're going to add this position. And I'm not going to do um, easy ease or anything like that today. Um, I just, uh, I'm doing a pretty basic tutorial here. So let's have it at, it's the first thing I want in. So let's do it at one second and you can zoom in on your thing to make sure it's right where you want it to be. That's at one second. Okay, perfect. And so, like I said, we're gonna be working backwards. So at this dot, that's where it ends. So where it begins, oop, add another one. And since it's before the one second, so it's at the start, it's gonna start off screen. So I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna shift to make sure it falls in a straight line. And so when you hit space bar, what you have done will play. Boom. And so <laughs> I think that was a little slow. And so instead of, instead of making the distance longer, I'm just gonna make the time faster. So instead of one second, let's go about 15 frames. So that's about 30 seconds or half a second because there's 30 frames per second and see. Okay, I like that a lot better. So that's just what it looks like. Um, and again, I'm not gonna do a bunch of crazy things to it. It's just gonna be a very simple thing. Okay, so, oops, let's open this back up, okay. So as you can see here, B pretty much is gonna fall from the beginning and stay on screen for the rest of the 10 seconds. So we're not gonna touch that, but let's say A doesn't come in until 15 frames. So A, again, like to work backwards. So if it's at, 15, I want it to, oops, finish at one second. So 30 frames in, we're gonna add a dot. We're gonna go using this arrow, it's gonna go back to this dot that you made. Again, hit shift, oops, and drag it off screen. Let's rewind that. So B comes in, then A comes in. Perfect. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, this is also going to be some tips to help your workspace be a little bit cleaner. So if you zoom in like all the way so you can see all the little frames and things, what you can do is you can move it so the A doesn't actually appear until frame 15 hits. So let's see what that looks like. B, A. And so it looks the same on the actual video but it's just a little less, it's one less thing that you have to worry about on your workspace. And it keeps it a little bit cleaner, especially if you have like a big project and a bunch of things are coming in and out, way easier to figure out um, what things are based on 
how much time they spend on the screen. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, um, this like this determines how long the whatever you have going on and off screen is on screen for. So if I brought this down and I have it cut down at two seconds or so. So boom, boom, and then at two seconds, it'll cut out like that. Um, if that's what you want, great. But if not, just move it back to wherever you want it to stay on till. For me, it's gonna be the end. That's cool. Um, perfect. So let's do C next. Again, like to work backwards. So let's go 15 frames after one second. Perfect. That's where it's gonna end. Position. And then we're gonna go back to frame 30. Make one there. Change it. Boop. And again, we're gonna change how long it's going to be showing on the workspace. It's going to go boom, boom, boom. Slay. OK, so that's pretty easy. Um, that's pretty much it. Nothing too wild or crazy or anything like that. Um, one more little tip. So let's say I have a lot of things attached with the movement of A. Um, hold on. So sorry. Let's. Let's move things around. So I personally like it, um, having the thing that's gonna be on screen the longest be at the bottom and then you move upwards. So as your projects get bigger, it's kind of like steps, which is kind of nice. So if you wanna do that, I would recommend it. If not, you can find your own way of doing it. Um, no judgment here, do whatever process works for you. Um, but let's say, okay, let's go back. So sorry. Um, here you can toggle the colors of what it looks like on your timeline. So like I said, let's pretend that we're going to have a lot of things moving with A. In fact, let's just do it. Let's have this little exclamation point. Oh, so I, so sorry, I moved this. I dragged and dropped it straight into this workspace as opposed to this guy. Um, but as you can see, it still uploads to this guy, but it's just like a quick little way. But if you're doing a lot of things, I would recommend uploading it here first and then adding it to here. Way easier to keep track of things. Okay, cool. So exclamation point ABC. Um, again, we're going to change this. Let's zoom in so make sure we're getting as close as we can here. Okay. Perfect. So I, in my brain, would consider the exclamation point and the A to go together. So let's highlight both of them and change the color to something else like pink. So now these two are together and you, they're like visually together by the color. It's also another way to keep your workplace clean and have your items easily identifiable. And so, finished product. Let's see what it looks like. Boom, boom, boom. Yay! Um, and yeah, that's kind of little basic things to help you get started on After Effects. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!